Hey you guys, Yulia here. So in today's video I wanted to show you some beautiful plant combinations that still look so good in the garden even though it's end of September. So the first plant combination I really like in the garden this year is in our front flower bed also known as the warm color border and the plant combo is this uh, mahogany splendor hibiscus together with um, amaranth dreadlocks i think they are so whimsical together the tassels of the amaranth together with this maple like shape uh, leaves of the mahogany splendor and amaranth dreadlocks is such a fun plant you guys <laughs> I will never be without it. It gets a lot of attention this time of the year, for sure. Both of these plants I started from seed this spring. They are very easy and um, amaranth dreadlocks actually self seeds in the garden. I do not mind at all. And also another plant that I have in this combo is this coleus. I am not sure as for the variety. I think it's a color blaze, uh, maybe but I got it a few years ago. I've been planting it out in the garden and then taking cuttings and overwintering it inside. It does really well as a house plant, does amazing as a garden plant in this combination here. The next plant combination I'm going to repeat next year for sure. It is Supertunia Snowdrift together with Diamond Frost Euphorbia. I showed you this plant combination in the last video and all the fails and kind of the wins that I had with this planting here, but I think these were okay. The Supertunias did have some problems with the budworm and I can show you right now the damage right there, but I do spray it with BT and they do okay and i think diversifying it with um, diamond frost euphorbia actually worked quite well i think it's just such a beautiful contrast of the larger flowers of the supertunias and the more finer flowers of diamond frost euphorbia really pretty so this plant combination you also saw in my previous video these are the pots in front of our front door there are a lot of pots here, but there's one that I liked in particular, and it's this one that I'm going to repeat next year. It's Diamond Frost Euphorbia, again, one of my favorites, Double Cascade Petunia. Let me check this out. And a Deep Purple Perfume uh, Nicotiana. I think it's just such a beautiful, elegant combination of flowers. Um, so the Double Cascade Petunia and the Nicotiana I started from seed this year and I think it's just such a great economical solution for pots. You can grow a lot of plants out of a seed packet and fill out a lot of pots. So I'm definitely going to do that next year. A lot more Double Cascade Petunias and the Nicotianas. All right, you guys, so I did say that I really liked all the other plant combinations I've showed you so far, but I think this one is on the top of my list. So what we have here is Euphorbia marginata or snow on the mountain, which is starting to set its seeds and they actually crackle and throw seeds all over as you walk by. It is an aggressive cell seeder, uh, so keep that in mind. Then there's Verbena bonariensis, which is also self-seeded. It's not as aggressive in my area, but it can become invasive. You so you have to check your specific area for that. And then there is Russian sage and Panicum regatum totem pole. I think there is something so meadowy and airy and beautiful about this combination and all of the colors, the purples the blues of the Russian sage and the white of the Euphorbia marginata. And the Euphorbia marginata and Verbena, again, are self-seeders, so I do not have to plant them for next year. And Russian sage and the Panicum virgatum is a perennial, of course. So this combination stays here and I will see it again next year. Here's another beautiful combination. This is Euchre Autumn Bride, Hakinacloa Aureola, and 
China Girl Holly, which is covered with berries. I mean, look at that. And the sun is really beautiful right now. So this area receives maybe three to four hours of sunlight. And all of these plants are doing really well. The Euchra is almost constantly covered by pollinators. I mean, they love this thing. I mean, it's end of September. It's kind of late at night and still has bees on it. It has been living in this cast iron container for three years now. I have no idea how it survives. The drought, the cold, <laughs> the frost, the rain. It is an amazing plant, you guys. It's just beautiful. It is about to start its fall color, which is probably going to match those berries on the China Girl. Here's a combination of some native plants. This is snake root and this is whitewood aster. And most people will definitely consider these plants weeds, but I like to have these plants in my garden for late season pollinators. They also make amazing bouquet fillers. So if I have dahlias or some larger flower bouquets, snake root especially looks just so beautiful. Now you have to keep in mind that snake root is poisonous to herbivores. So if you have goats or cows, um, definitely do not plant this. And I do weed out this particular plant everywhere else in my garden because it is extremely aggressive self-seeder. But I leave uh, one area of my garden where it can be beneficial to late season pollinators. To prevent it um, from spreading aggressively, both the snake root and the whitewood aster, I just top off the seed heads before they starting um, to fly all over the place. Here's a quick overview of the sidewalk border and what it looks like right now at the end of September. But I wanted to show you this specific flower combination of Calamintha nepeta and Vancouver dahlia. So my go-to combos in plants is usually combine bolder, larger flowers of, uh, or leaves with finer textures. It almost always works. And also what else is happening in this combination is that the white tips of the Vancouver Dahlia is actually picking up the white color of the Kalamintha flowers. And by the way, Vancouver Dahlia, can I give a shout out? Such a great Dahlia. Really long blooming, large flowers, pretty much covered in flowers all summer long. A uh, winner in my book. Then, then there's another little flower that I have here. It's Browalia americana, which is also picking up white middle right there from the white flowers of the Kalamintha. Here's a sidewalk border overview from another angle and another example of bolder textures with finer textures. So I have been repeating this combination for years now. This is elephant ears, Calacasia esculenta, and Penicetum grass. Uh, this is regular Penicetum allopecuroides. And I think it's just such a beautiful combination here. These just really tropical looking elephant ears with this grass here. And I did add some Cleome and Brevalia here for color. And I just wanted to talk about the sun exposure here a little bit. So this spot receives about three hours of sun, which is not a lot of sun. And to get a really nice looking uh, plant combination is kind of tough in these conditions, but the elephant ears are doing really well. And so is the Penicetum grass and also the Cleome and Brevalia are some of those few annuals that do okay in part sun conditions. So this is Senorita Rosalita Cleome and um, again, Brevalia Americana. Just such a fun plant combination here. Here's the plant I'm trying to grow again this year. This is Actea or also known as Simisifuga chocoholic. I've grown it before, I've killed it. 
I'm trying it again. It's actually doing okay. It is less than five months old. It has this beautiful darker foliage and I planted it right next to the Solomon seal, which has beautiful variegation. So those white flowers on the Chocoholic is picking up that white. Now the flowers on this plant are incredibly fragrant. I mean, they are intoxicating, you guys. Like, just for the fragrance, try growing this plant. It is a native plant to Eastern United States. Just gorgeous, and I think they look so beautiful together. The Solomon Seal and the Actea. There is one plant combination in my vegetable garden that I actually find quite decorative. So there is the sage and purple ball basil, which I started from seed this spring. I think it's such a decorative basil. I could see growing it at the edge of the bed. So this is pure purple, but that one actually turned out to be a little spotty purple. And then I have this medium sized tomato growing in the pot together with the basil. But I mean, how beautiful does this look? Another plant combination I really like is all of the elephant ears that I have in the patio this year. From Heart of the Jungle to Hawaiian Punch to Mojito, the coffee cups, and the regular Calacasia esculenta is just such a great addition to the space. The Calacasia esculenta, the regular elephant ears, got huge. <laughs> you can always use it as an umbrella if it starts raining. But all of the different colors and textures in here, I'm definitely going to repeat. And the frost is coming in about three weeks and I'm going to bring these guys in then and save them either as tubers or houseplants. All right, so this plant combination here is actually kind of unexpected because I only planned on growing dahlias here in the space this year, but then the amaranth dreadlocks came in and self-seeded themselves, and I kind of didn't have the heart to remove them because they were so beautiful. Now, these are the same type of amaranth that I showed you in the beginning of the video. They are much taller in the space because they're kind of trying to reach out to the sun because... This space only receives maybe five hours of sunlight maximum. And the same goes for dahlias. They're trying to reach out to the light, like this Otto Thrill dahlia right here, which is probably one of the tallest ones that I've ever had. It's like seven feet tall. Now these are American Dawn uh, dahlias. Then there's Emery Paul right there. There is Florel dahlia, the big white one uh, right behind me. I actually like this combination so much that I think I may just repeat it next year. All right, you guys, this is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.